Cut Love with Pat's Two Cents. I want to share a thought God just put in my head about your vantage point. What is your vantage point? You know, there's a scripture that says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. See, when we look from our own vantage point, things can look very dismal. Things can look very gloomy, very hopeless. But when we look through the eyes of God, there's a whole new vantage point. God says, my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Listen to this. For those of you who are either in panic mode or who are being threatened in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit by powers that be that are beyond your control. Mm-hmm. This is from 2 Kings chapter 6. Excuse me. Verse 7. Verse, I'm going to start at 14. Okay, king of Syria is after the king of Israel. Things go awry. He's wondering which one of his guys is a spy. What's going on? Are they warning the king? And one of the servants says, no, it was Elijah. God warned the prophet. And the prophet heard you and warned him. So, this is what the king does. Therefore, sent he thither, he sent there, horses and chariots, and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. They circled the city in. Okay, now, verse 15. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city both with horses and chariots and his servant said unto him alas my master how shall we do and he answered fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them hmm. verse 17 and Elisha prayed and said Lord I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> now, he had angels, he had warring angels, everything on his side, sent straight from heaven. So the army he saw was outnumbered by the army that was invisible. And they didn't have to lift a hand. All he did was look up and talk to God. God handled that battle. Now let me share this with you. This is Pat's two cents. Let's say you're in a traffic jam. I'm, I'm trying to bring it down to our terms now. Let's say you're in a traffic jam. And there is a massive multi-car collision that has just taken place down the freeway ways. Well, you can't see it because you're sitting low in a car. Okay? You're, you're, you're in a car. And you're looking up and all you see is bumper to bumper to bumper. You don't see a way out. So you are stuck, baby. And you're sitting there wondering how long. Well, you're inching along because they're trying to make a way for some of the cars to clear out so they can get help to the accident and allow traffic to move, even if it's as slow as molasses. But you don't see it. And there are two exits between you and the accident. And then all of a sudden you line up and the freeway is pretty straight, but you can't see. So you're stuck because you don't know what's going on. You can't see what's going on because you're too deep in the thick of it. Do you hear what I'm saying? All you can see is what's happening right around your, your circle, your sphere, right there. You can't see any further. But God knows the beginning and the end, doesn't he? So now, imagine 
you ask God, Lord, what's going on? What should I do? And then all of a sudden, God raises your sights. And you are raised up high in your spirit as if you were driving a bus or a big rig. And now you're sitting up way high. And you look down the road. And you see the accident, the multi-car collision. But you also see two exits. And God highlights the exit you should take to get you past that back onto the freeway. Down the road where you have to be. So that you could get to your destination on time. I used to drive the bus. Excuse me. I remember one of the main things of training that the, the uh, bus driver taught us as we were learning how to drive this, the school bus, because I learned how to drive the school bus. Then we learned the city bus, which was a lot easier. In the school bus, what she taught us, I carried over into all my driving habits. That is... Don't just focus where you are. She would ask us while we're behind the wheel, what do you see? Describe what you see. I see this, I see that truck, I see... And she says, what do you see? And we're telling her what we see, and we're all wondering, why does she keep doing this? Then finally, when she gets behind the wheel, she says, look three miles up the road and tell me what you see. She would, I mean, it was like it was set up perfectly. And we could see a bunch of flashing lights. She said, that means there's trouble ahead, and you see traffic is slowing down. Now, those cars are all going to end up stuck right there. But you have a higher vantage point, And you need to look ahead and prepare for anything. And she said, when you see there's trouble up ahead, get off the freeway and reroute yourself so that you can circumvent that problem, get all the way around and get ahead of it, then get back on the freeway and be about your way. And you won't waste an hour or two or three or four sitting there scratching your head because all you watched was what was going on right around you. That's called a higher vantage point. And I'm telling you, that helped me become a better driver and it helped me avoid a whole lot of traffic jams even in a low car I at least learned to look ahead of me but from a bus's standpoint the driver's sitting way up higher almost higher than the top of a car that you might be driving so your eyes are way up. You can see so much further down the road and above the other vehicles that you're normally stuck and blocked with your view. It changes how you see things. It changes the decisions and the choices you make. And it changes the outcome. Lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path.